Okay, so welcome to another YouTube video. This one is uh, I'm super excited about because <clears throat> I love FPGAs and I love making videos about FPGAs. Um, this video is going to be on a sequence detect or a button sequence detect and we're going to be entering it on a a keypad sort of thing which has a different different amounts of buttons on it and if you have a speaker um, you can use the speaker and we're going to output a tone depending on if the sequence is correct or incorrect to the speaker and um, first things first is systems since this is a sequence detector it's convenient to use a uh, finite state machine to represent how this is going to look and then it's going to help us code it actually so I chose to use a more machine. It's important to note that the correct sequence, button sequence that we're going to be using is button two, button three, button one, then button three. And then we're going to have an enter button, which is button zero. And once you press that, depending on if the sequence is correct or incorrect, it'll give us a red light for incorrect, blue light for correct. And if you have the speaker, like I said, which I will show later, then we can output a tone. So, <clears throat> ooh, excuse me, um, the first state we're going to look at is the reset state, okay? So, the reset state is just where things are, it's actually the default state too. So, the outputs are, are all going to be low. And if button 2 is 0, then we're staying, we're staying in the reset state, right? Because what we're looking for is in the first part of the sequence, we're looking right down here, if you can see my mouse, at we're looking for button two, right? If but when button two goes high. So if button two's low, well, that's not what we're looking for. So we stay in the reset state. If button two is high, we go into this state got two, which means we got the button two. Okay. Now there's a couple more inputs that we have to worry about. All right. There's the other buttons. And in the reset state, since we're only looking at button two, because that's the first input to the correct sequence, we don't care what button three is or button one is. So those, if one of those are one or zero, doesn't matter, we stay in the reset state. Additionally, we have the enter button, and I talked about that. And so after you're done with the sequence and you press the enter button, if the sequence is correct, you get a blue light. If the sequence is not correct, you get a red light. So if you don't press the enter button, you just stay in the reset state. However, at this point in the state machine, if you press the enter button, well, you don't have the correct sequence, so we need to output a red light showing that you don't, you haven't entered the correct sequence. And if you have the speaker, we'll show that it's an incorrect tone. So that's this state is the indicate R, and I'll go back. So indicate red means that it's an error or it's an incorrect sequence. So what happens is the red LED will go high and the tone is going to be lower. You'll hear it um, if in the next few videos and it just sounds like a sort of error, error tone. Okay, so that's going to be it for the reset state and we're going to move into the got to state. So at this point we've gotten button two and we've said okay that's high and now we're, the next button we're looking for in the sequence in the correct sequence is button three, right? So if button 3 is 0, we're going to stay in that state, got 2. Button 3 is 1, we move to the next state, okay? Similar to the reset state. Likewise, with reset, we have other inputs that we have to worry about, okay? In got 2, we don't care what button 2 or button 1 is because we're only looking at button 3 and enter. And so for the enters, if it's 0, stay in the same state. And if enter is 1, we go to the indicate red state because at this point we do not have a correct sequence. So if we hit the enter button, that sequence is going to be incorrect. Tone's going to be a low error tone. Red LED is going to be high. Okay. So the only way that we can exit this got to state, well, there's two ways actually. There's the enter one, but the only way to get to the next correct state is going to be through if button three goes high. Then we go to got to three, which shows us that we have both buttons two and button three are high. 
So now, according to this one, if we have both button two's high, button three has gone high, not at the same time, but in a sequence, of course. Now we're looking at, where'd my mouse go? Button one, okay? So button one is zero, stay in the same state. Button one is one, go to got two, three, one. Yes, makes sense, okay? Because now we have the one in the sequence. Likewise with the other inputs. And now we're in got two, three, one. The last button in the sequence is button three. So similarly, similar to the rest of them, button three is zero, stay in the same. Button three is one, go to the next one. We don't care what the other two buttons are. However, if the enter is one, we're still going to indicate that incorrect sequence, right? Because we don't have all the correct um, buttons that have been pressed. Now this state got two, three, one, three. Okay, we get there from got two, three, one if button three is one. Okay, this means we have all the correct we have the correct sequence. And where do we go from here, right? Well, we want to show that we have the correct sequence. And one way to do that, or the way that I did it, is with a blue LED and a higher tone frequency. So, and the only one we're, we're actually looking at is because we have the, the whole correct sequence, we have two, three, one, three, button two, three, one, three. We have the whole correct sequence. The only input that we're caring about right now is the enter button. So if we're looking for the enter button, whoops, where did I go here? Okay, so if enter is zero, we're just going to stay in the same state. But if enter is one, when we have the correct sequence, we go to this other state, which is indicate B or indicate blue. Okay, so the blue LED is high and the tone is high. So an example of the tones, I think the low tone is 110 hertz and the high tone is... 392 hertz so you can definitely tell tell the difference between the two it's just sort of a so the leds are a visual thing and the the tones are an uh, are an auditory is auditory the right word i don't know you can hear it so now that we're indicate this or now that we're in this indicate blue state how do we get back to the reset state so we can enter another sequence Likewise, from the indicate red state, how do we get back to the reset state to enter another sequence? Well, we are going to use this, these delay blocks, okay? And these two are right here. And why these delay blocks are important is that they delay the amount of time that we're in this indicate R state. And we're going to be in it for, um, it's either a half second or one second. And I think I put half second in the state machine, but I think it's actually one second in the code. So I'm sorry about that. It might be half a second. I don't know, we'll see. Anyways, it's either half second or one second delay. What that does is it keeps the LEDs high for a half a second and it keeps the tone high for a half a second, right? So when when you're seeing these things, say you are actually have, have a keypad in real life, the LED is just, just not going to like blip for a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of the amount of time. It's going to stay so you can see it. And that's what I wanted to mimic in the state machine. So these half second delays, they're going to make sure that we stay in either the indicate blue state or the indicate red state for half a second. And like I said, I think it's actually one second. But then after those half second or one second delays, then we go back to the restate reset state sorry and um, that's how we start the cycle over again so that's the state machine um, you can pause it and take a screenshot of it it uh, I'm it's a more machine uh, because the outputs only depend on the current state one important thing to know is that there's an asynchronous clear in this uh, in the code and so if clear goes low doesn't matter where we are in the state we're always going to return to reset and what that is showing is say you had like a keypad on a door and you knew that you uh, entered the wrong sequence or you hit the wrong button right you'd want to clear to be able to clear it and then enter the right sequence so let's say we are in where's my mouse got two three 
and we enter the the wrong the wrong sequence we press enter then we go to indicate red well or no sorry let's say we're in got two three and we realize oh wait we press the wrong press the wrong button or something then we can press the clear clear goes low then we're back to the reset enter the correct state or sequence and then come around to indicate blue right and i think that is it yep so um if you have any questions you can leave them in the comments below and um, I think the next video is going to come out tomorrow. So I hope that this helps you. This is a super fun project and I'm excited to get started. So thanks for watching.